Beautiful day, got my Bible, I'm ready to go. You tackle something that is very confusing to so many people, and that is the difference between the curse and the demon. What is a generational curse? It's a warranted verdict given by the courtroom of heaven against a person, against a household that committed a transgression that warrants it. If you are a Christian and then you end up practicing a witchcraft, witchcraft will open a door without a shadow of a doubt. Idolatry will produce a generational curse. Anger will not produce a generational curse, but hatred will produce a generation of course the demon is not the curse the demons are the enforcer of the curse when i stab somebody in jail they send you to the box the box is the jail within the jail so if you end up in the box that's the curse which means you're cursed within condemnation so the curse doesn't start in hell it starts in the courtroom <laughs> Now, this is one of the ways that they keep Christians who either feel oppressed or they are broke in the church enslaved to this mentality. First and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and say that there is no such thing as a generational curse. And I'm going to break that down even deeper. But before I say that, let me handle one thing he said. He said that demons are the enforcers of generational curses. Now, according to your story and according to the Christian belief, there was a war in heaven. And demons are the angels who sided with the devil and fought against God and therefore were cast down to the earth to be in prison on the earth. Right? Yeah. Why would a demon then do the bidding of a God who has put a curse on people? If I was a demon and I saw that God is trying to rehabilitate humans what i'm not going to do is punish the humans because of a god curse what i'm going to do as a demon is give the humans all the money all the sex all the health i'm gonna give them everything their hearts desire so that they will feel like they don't need this god i'm gonna move them away from this guy by giving them the things that pleasure them the things that they delight in I'm not going to punish them and abide by the rules of this God. So demons as the enforcers of the curse is stupid. It's dumb. It makes absolutely no sense because according to your book, demons don't have a process of rehabilitation. So it's not like they're trustees in a prison who have a possibility of rehabilitation. Demons will be the ones who sneak. They will be red from Sha Shawshank. I'm sneaking in all the things that you need while you're in this prison to make your life a little bit better. That's what I'm going to do. Now, as far as generational curses are concerned. I submit to you that there is no such thing as a generational curse. First, if you're a Christian, I want you to go ahead and just stop thinking right now. Well, you already done that before, but stop thinking about a generational curse, because according to your book, in Isaiah, it says that no longer, Isaiah or Ezekiel, it says that no longer will the sins of the father be passed down to the sins of the son. So therefore, there is no such thing as generational curses, even based on your own book. And for all my Hebrew Israelites who think that Deuteronomy 28 has anything to do with the transatlantic slave trade. How can that be if no sins of the father are passed down to the, to the children? Don't make sense, does it? And why would you love a God that says that I'm going to punish you for 400 years for what somebody did 400 years prior? That's an evil God. That's a vindictive God. That's a God with a massive ego problem. So, why do I say there's no such thing as a generational curse? There's not. There's generational habits. There is that. There's the hypnotic rhythm of growing up with parents or in a community or in a group, a culture that continue to perpetuate the same ideas and the same type of lifestyle. And you grow up in that, you pick those habits up. When I was a personal trainer, I used to tell my clients, 25% of your body are your genetics. The other 75% is your environment. That means that the overwhelming majority of who you are right now 
is based on your experiences and the environment to which you grew up in, the parents that you had, the uncles, aunts, grandparents, community, all those structures determine who you are. Most people are Christian because they grew up in a Christian community or they grew up surrounded by Christianity or they grew up in a Christian household. Most people are Muslim for the same reason, Jewish for the same reason, and so on and so forth. You are not that by choice 99% of the time. Even in America, a person's like, well, my family never went to church and my family, my parents didn't take me to church. You were surrounded by churches. You were surrounded by people who always taught Christianity. You're surrounded by people with a Christian mindset. You had Christianity all around you and media propaganda that was against Islam. So you wouldn't choose Islam. You would choose Christianity 99% of the time. So it's habitual, it's habits, it's things you've picked up in your culture. Is your hypnotic rhythm give you a perfect example you see my mother father grandparents never taught me anything about finances uh, to help me get out of or become better than 10 percent of where they were in their lives so when i went off to the marine corps i had no idea how to manage a checkbook because we didn't manage checkbooks it was get a job work pay your bills and then try to save a little bit but for the most part, go have fun with whatever's left over. So when I went to go get my first apartment and they told me I had to pay a deposit, I was like, why? When I went to get utilities, they told me I had to pay a deposit. Why? So I called my mom and I thought these people were trying to scam me. And I said, Mom, why are these people asking for deposits? They trying to scam me, you know, because I'm a young black man. What's going on? And she was like, she said, no. She said, you know, you got to pay a deposit for all those things. And I told her, no, I don't. You never taught me any of those things. How would I know if you never taught me or granddad never taught me, grandma never taught me, my dad never taught me. Nobody ever taught me that. My aunts, uncles, no one ever said anything about when you go get a place, you have to pay a deposit. So I had no idea that I had to pay these things, which made me lose that apartment and have to wait another month to get another place so I can save the money to have the deposits. That's just how I grew up. That's not a generational curse of finances. I didn't grow up understanding S&Ps and mutual funds or hedge funds wasn't around yet. Too, they, weren't, they were around, but they weren't big. I didn't know any of those things. We didn't talk about investments. We didn't talk about money matters. We didn't talk about any of those things. So I had no idea of those things. Uh, when it comes to relationships, many people grow up in a relationship and all they see is their parents, their grandparents, their uncles and all that. And so they develop their ideas about a relationship based on those people. And this is why many people have problems in their relationship because all they have watched are problems in a relationship. And when it comes to things like your health, sure, if your family is predisposed to heart disease, which many people will say that my family is predisposed to heart disease and diabetes, except for the fact that I went and I did the research about what you eat determines how your body is going to respond. And although you may be slightly more predisposed than predisposed than the other person, I looked at the way that my grandparents ate. I looked at the way that my mom eats and my, my dad and the bumblebee. I looked at the way that all of them eat. And I looked at their exercise regime and I realized that the reason why they're more susceptible to those things is because of how they eat, not because of their genetics. And so at this time frame of my life at 52 years old, Unlike other people in my family, I don't have hypertension. I don't have high blood pressure. I'm nowhere near pre-diabetic. I don't have any of those issues that many of my family members had or have because I don't eat like they eat. I don't eat fried foods. I don't eat much. I don't I eat very little meat. Uh, I eat mostly fruits and vegetables. I exercise. And even within my family, I can see the ones who are doing more of that type of lifestyle has a better health situation than the other ones at the same age. So therefore... There is no generational curses. There is just a hypnotic rhythm to which you have developed into and that you continue to perpetuate in your life. And that is what's creating your lack of money. That's what's creating your lack of health. That's what creates your lack of relationship. That's what creates your lack of anything is the limited knowledge and just following the crowd. So if you want to change it, then increase the vibration of the activities and the mindset that moves you towards your goals towards the higher level and not stay on the lower vibration that your family is sitting on. So with that, y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey. 
good vibrations.